Man is a creature of habits. And probably like me, you find yourself with some good habits and with some bad habits. Um, and recently I've been trying to analyze my, my habits and seeing which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, and I came up with this idea. I've been working on this theory for a while now about how you can see into your future. And it started with me analyzing one of my habits. And the, the bad habit that, I, that, that got me started on, on this theory was, was eating donuts in the morning. Uh, I worked in construction most of my life. And uh, just some of the habits that go along with that are uh, you just don't eat very well. You get into habits of eating at gas stations and at fast food restaurants and stopping every morning at a gas station to get energy drinks or, or you know, sugary things uh, like donuts. Um, and so what I started doing was um, I live in a town where from where I live to get to work, I have to go by this grocery store that makes fresh donuts in the morning. And man, I got in this habit of every single morning, every morning, I would stop at that grocery store and get a fresh donut. Uh, and it didn't take very long for one donut to turn into two every morning. I could never do more than two, but, but I, w I would get two. And I'd feel terrible. Every single time I ate them, I'd feel awful and, and sick, and I just had this stomach ache and feel groggy. It didn't make me feel good at all, but I, ha I, but I developed that habit of, of having them every day. And one time, I went to the grocery store to get my donuts, and for some reason, I hit this big line of people. There were all these people that wanted donuts that day. Uh, which was fine, but so I got, you know, I got in line, I'm, you know, waiting to get my donuts. And, and for some reason, my eyes started wandering to the people in front of me in line. And I just made some quick observations about, you know, the people that were in front of me in line. And this is not to put them down or to, to, to judge them negatively or whatever, but, uh, but some of the observations were, what I, that I made were um, that not a single one of them appeared to be well off. You know, like 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 financially, not a single one of them looked like they were dressed for success or that they were that they were going anywhere. Uh, they just they looked complacent. That's what they looked like to me. They looked like people who were who just didn't. I don't know. They just looked complacent. Whatever that looks like to you, I don't know what they looked. They embodied what the idea of complacent looks like to me. Uh, so they looked complacent, and then I, then the second thing I noticed was that none of them were fit, like really, you know, in good health. Which you know, they're in line to get donuts. <laughs> But then the third thing I noticed was that not only were they not fit, but they were, every single person in front of me in line was, was obese. And there are some other reasons for being obese, but most of, most obesity is caused by bad dietary habits, like eating donuts every morning. And uh, it, and it hit me right then that I was in line behind these people waiting to, to, to get something that would probably lead to my future being what theirs was. I'm young, you know, I'm 26 years old. All of them were probably, you know, had 10 years on me or, or, or maybe were twice my age, you know. And so I, I felt in that moment like I was looking into the future. Like I was, I was like, man, if I keep going to this line every day, if I keep coming here to eat these donuts every day, that's probably where I'm gonna end up. Uh, this is a bad habit. So if I don't replace it with a good one, I'm probably gonna be, I'm complacent. Okay, I'm complacent with this habit. One, two, I'm not going to be fit because you don't get fit eating donuts every day. And three, I'm not only probably not going to be fit, I'm probably going to be obese in 10 years and, and 26 more years when I'm, when I'm in my 50s or whatever. And uh, man, I, it was just this wake up call. It's like, man, I need to break this habit because that's where it's going to take me. And I realized then that, man, I wonder if I analyze some of my other habits or I analyze other parts of life, how I can see into my future. Right then it was really obvious because I was like, man, okay, eating donuts every day leads to poor health in the future. Uh, and, and I didn't want that. I don't want that. And so that, it was easier for me to, to change that, and I don't do that anymore. I, don't st I, I still don't have the best diet, but I do not stop and have donuts every morning. And so that's a good thing. And so I, I've kind of been working on this theory about how you can see into your future, about how we are all able to see into our future by analyzing the habits that we have now and analyzing the things that we do daily, uh, we can see exactly what our future is going to look like. Um, and so I wanted to talk about a couple stories. So that's the first one. So the first way to see into your future, the first way that I noticed that I could see into my future was by analyzing who is in front of me in line. And that can apply across the board. You, you can take that literally, like the people that were in front of me in the donut line, or you can take that metaphorically, like who, I don't know, who's the, the, who's the metaphorical person in front of you in whatever you're doing. 
think about something that you do, a habit that you have, or you know something that you do all the time, often, uh, and think about what other people that are doing that thing look like down the road. Uh, and it's, it's not that hard to see into your future. I know that eating donuts every day will lead to me having poor health in the future, and I don't want that. So I change my habits, I don't do that anymore, and now my future looks different. I've changed my future because I have got rid of that habit. And that's a powerful thing. So the next one, the next way that I found that I can see into my future um, is by asking myself this question, who do I aspire to be like in the room? Now this one comes because, uh, I, like I said, I worked in construction and I, I would eat at, at fast food a lot. I still eat at fast food too much, more than I should. But, uh, but man, I love Taco Bell. Uh, I, I got hooked on it when I was like, I think I was 15 years old or six, 16 years old, and I worked at a Taco Bell for a summer. And I got hooked on this stuff. I, they'd give you a free meal every day, and I would eat my free meal every day, and I never once got sick of it, and I loved it, and I, I have been hooked on it ever since. Um, but there was a time, a long time, like, I don't know, a full six-month period, and this was like last year, okay? This is, this is recent. So the donuts were also recent. All, most of this stuff is recent. But for like six months of last year, I had Taco Bell almost every single day, almost every single weekday. And uh, if you've ever been to Taco Bell, you know that that's probably one, not healthy. Two, that's a lot of money. And uh, it's just not a good habit. And uh, so same, same kind of experience. So normally I'd go in and there's like one person in front of me or whatever, it'd be quick. But this one day I got there and there's this huge line, like probably 15 people. I've never seen that before. Uh, but I, I could have just gone somewhere else. There were other restaurants around, but I was hooked on Taco Bell. And so, uh, so I waited behind the 15 people and, uh, same thing. I kind of, you know, I was playing on my phone for a while and then I got bored of that. And so I started looking around and I was looking in line and, and same thing I noticed people of poor health, people of, uh, you know, just, just not really going anywhere. Nobody was dressed in a suit. Nobody, you know, it was just people that are complacent. Um, so I noticed that and I started looking around the room and it wasn't just the people in front of me. It was the people around me. The whole room was full of and I want to be clear when I say this, that you shouldn't always take from people. You should also give to people. But, you know, you become like the five people that you surround yourself with. Okay, you become your five closest friends. There, there are a bunch of variations of, of, that, of that idea. And when I looked around the room at Taco Bell, I did not see five people in that room. What, I did not see one person in that room that I aspired to be like. I did not see a single person in that room that I could learn from, that I... That, uh, that, you know, that I saw and inspired me to be better. There's not a single person in that whole place that I aspired to be like. So who do I aspire to be like in the room? Wherever you find yourself, whether it's at work, uh, you know, whatever your hobbies are, uh, you know, wherever, wherever you find yourself going. Now, I mostly go from work or from home to work, and that's about it. You know, I go from home to work, home to work, home to work. So Taco Bell is one of the few experiences where I like I spend some time, I spent some time often, and uh, what I realized was there was not a single person in that room that I aspired to be like, and 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 I realized that I could probably see into my future that way. The same same as being in the donut line, seeing into the future, seeing an unhealthy version of myself that I didn't want to become. I changed my habit to not doing that thing. To avoid that future and so now my future has changed it's not that anymore now it's now it's different it's better well think about how changing your environment will affect your future think about spending time in places where there are people that you aspire to be like and how that's different and and the com different conversations you could have with people and you know I, I don't know about for you but for me at least when I see somebody that's doing well that's succeeding that's fit that's inspiring to me. It doesn't get me down. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't beat me down. It doesn't make me feel bad. It makes me think, man, I need to be doing better. I, there are things that I could be doing better to be like that person. And, uh, and what I quickly realized was Taco Bell was not the place that I was going to find those people. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I've been, I've been trying to, to find different places that, that I can find people that I do aspire to be like. And it's not like, like I said, I mostly go from, from home to work. And so it's not like I'm going out to, to places to seek these people, but, I could, you know, so maybe, maybe every once, maybe instead of spending, you know, $6 every day at Taco Bell, uh, I bring lunch to work every day. So, so here's what I have been doing. Sometimes I'll bring lunch to work and, uh, and, and I'll, I'll watch inspiring videos on YouTube or I will, uh, I'll, 
I'll, I'll download podcasts before I go to work and I'll listen to those uplifting, inspiring podcasts. Or, you know, I, I, I do all these, I do, I do different things than go to Taco Bell and waste my time there eating nasty food and looking at Facebook the whole time. Um, and then maybe the $6 that I save every day, uh, I go to one really good lunch once a week and I put myself around other people that can afford a better lunch who are, who are better people to connect with and network with and aspire to be like. You know, so, so there are little different things that you can do to, to put yourself in different environments where you can aspire to be like people in the room. I just know that Taco Bell wasn't it. And uh, my future was not looking very bright eating Taco Bell every day and being, one, eating bad food, two, being surrounded by people who I didn't aspire to be like. And so since I made that change, I have changed my future. My future did not look great having Taco Bell every day. Now my future looks different because I spend time whether it's virtually, you know, with people on my, you know, on my phone that have, that are successful or that have, you know, reached a certain quality of life that I aspire to, um, or physically I put myself in environments where, with people that I aspire to be like. Um, but either way, I've changed my future because of that one decision. So recently in, in February, so two months ago-ish, uh, I went to Las Vegas for a business conference and um, I've never, I'm not a gambler. I've, I've never spent money gambling. Uh, that's not true. When the Powerball got to like several billion dollars, I did buy a couple Powerball tickets just because I was like, ah, it's got to be someone. <laughs> I didn't win. But um, that's, that's the extent of my gambling experience, like three Powerball tickets. Uh, and so um, I, I'd never gambled before. I know it's, it can be a kind of destructive habit, but you know, I know some people are good at it, whatever. But because I'd never done it before, and there was going to be a casino in the bottom of my, in the bottom floor of my hotel, I planned to have ten dollars, just ten dollars cash that I was going to spend on some coin machines and, and call it good, just to just to do it. Um, now those three days were eight-hour days filled full of speakers all day. So morning till night, it was eight hours uh, of, of just straight speakers, and it was actually pretty exhausting to sit there all day and listen to these people and, and take notes and try to get everything I could out of it. So when I got home every night, I was pretty exhausted. But after the three days were over, uh, then came the day that I was supposed to fly out. And uh, my flight was at like five in the afternoon. So I had almost a whole day to, to just do, you know, whatever I wanted. And so that was when I was planning on, on spending my $10 on, on the machine. But what I noticed, so I had to go from my hotel, it was like on the 17th floor, I had to go down. Then I had to walk through the casino of my hotel through another casino and then through a third casino to get to the event center where where this conference was at every day. So every day, three times, three through three casinos in the morning and then through three casinos on the way to the conference in the morning and then through three casinos I'd come back to my room at night. Uh, I would I would look at the people that were that were gambling on these machines. And what I noticed was that those casinos were nothing like the idea that I built up in my head. They were not like the Ocean's Eleven, you know. They were not like Ocean's Eleven or Twelve or Thirteen. They were not like uh, James Bond. They were not. They were not glamorous at all. Uh, the, you know, they they smelled bad. <laughs> they smelled terrible. Uh, and the machines were. I don't know. They just. They just weren't. They just weren't what I was expecting. But the but the most important thing that I noticed were the people gambling, the people spending money on these games and these machines. Uh, I don't know how to say it nicely, so I'll just, you know, say it. They looked miserable. They looked, I didn't see a happy person spending money on those machines. There, were the, there was the occasional drunk who was, you know, jolly and was, you know, throwing his coins wherever he wanted and didn't care. But, man, the people that I saw playing those games were not happy. They were, they were not happy. They were, they were not well off. Like, you know, like it, most of these you know, this, this is my quick judgment from walking through a casino, so I shouldn't, you know, I'm not trying to pass judgment on these people. But what I observed was that it didn't look like any of them had money to spare, okay? It looked like they were spending, you know, they're spending their, their grocery money on on these games and losing it. Uh, you know, maybe thinking, oh, well, I played, I put 100 coins in this thing. If I put one more, I should win. I should win. Somebody's got to win. You know, it's just this toxic mentality. And uh, it made me so sick, like so... I felt bad for these people, like they were throwing all this money away that they didn't have, and they weren't happy about it. You know, I, they, they were just unhappy, they were miserable. And I, 
so the ten dollars that I had, I could not, I physically could not get myself to put it in the coin machine to get coins out, because, again, I'm 26. I see all these people that are older than me. Most most of them are older than me, throwing all their money away, and they were miserable. That was the future potentially of someone that starts gambling. You know, their gambling can become an addiction, and it is for a lot of people, where they will spend every cent that they make, and sometimes more than they make. On these games, they'll get in trouble. They'll they can't pay their bills. Their family really suffers, you know. Uh, and so I started analyzing what kind of people were playing these games, and I realized that is not a future that I want to have. That is the future of most gamblers. There are very few gamblers that make money gambling and that become well off because they gamble. Uh, and so I withheld my ten dollars. I did not gamble at all to avoid that future. I could see into the future. You know, the, the potential future that I could have if I started gambling and if I got hooked on it. Um, and it was so, that future was so miserable that I withheld my money and I didn't make that choice. Because, you know, I didn't want that. I wanted a different future. So I changed my future. By not spending the $10, I changed my future. And so the third question that you can ask yourself, uh, and this doesn't have to apply to gambling in Las Vegas. It can, it can apply to, to just about anything that involves money. But does this activity make me money or lose me money? Now, if it's a hobby, then that's fine, whatever. You know, you, you, money is, is meant to be exchanged. And so if you exchange your money for an experience, fine. In, including Las Vegas, if you can go and say, I want to spend $10 and you only spend $10 just to have the experience, then fine. But what if you get hooked? You know, <laughs> uh, will it make me money and, or will it make me happy? I knew that I wasn't going to make money with my $10. The chances are very small. And by looking at all the people, I knew that they weren't making money and they weren't happy. So that was not an activity that I wanted because I wanted a different future than that. So with whatever activity you're, you're doing, does this activity make me money or lose me money? The last question is prompted from an experience that I had uh, while I was living in Italy for two years. And it was towards the end of that time. So I'd been in Italy for at least 18 months. And I lived in a city called Brescia. And... Uh, and, and just so you know, uh, in Italian, when there's like a group of people, particularly young people, like teenagers or, or young adults or whatever, when it's like a mixture of, of boys and girls and, and whatever, just, just a group of younger people, they're referred to as ragazzi, okay? So uh, so one day, me and, I was, I was a missionary and we always have a companion, you know, one other missionary at least that we're with. So we're walking down the street, it's night, it's dark, and... Uh, you know, we have name tag. It's really obvious who we are. You've probably seen Mormon missionaries before. Really obvious who we are. We have our name tags. You know, we have our white shirts and whatever. And we're young. You know, we, I, was, I was 20 at the time. Uh, we're just, we're just, we stick out. So there was, there was no one on our side of the street. So we were walking down a, an empty sidewalk. On the opposite side of the street, uh, there was this group of ragazzi. Uh, and you know, so we're, we're, we're doing this. You know, we're getting closer to each other, or whatever. And. Uh, I don't remember what they they started yelling at us, not not like accusingly or, or angrily or whatever, but just to get our attention. Like, hey, who are you guys? You know, just just trying to get attention. So keep in mind, we're standing across two lanes from each other. We're on each side of a road on sidewalks. We're yelling. It's dark. We're the only ones on this street. <laughs> hey, they start yelling like, hey, who are you guys? What are you doing? And so we explain to them, man, we're missionaries. We you know we share a message uh, about Jesus Christ. Do you want to hear it? You know, and. And they said, no, we don't care about that. But they're like, what are you, what are you, you know, like, what do you, what do you do? Like, what are you, what are you doing walking down the street? So we told them, we said, oh, we come here for, uh, we go all over the world and we spend two years uh, teaching people about this, this thing that we believe in. And we invite them, we, we invite people to, to learn more about it. And if people want to hear, we, we tell them. And they said, oh, well, what, well, what kinds of things do you teach? Why would you come? And they said, well, where are you from? We said, America. They said, oh, America. You know, they, then they start saying, some vulgar things in America in English that was the, their limited vocabulary is all they could say, <laughs> which is what most most ragazzi would do. So they start yelling profanities at us. It was being funny, so we're laughing with them. Uh, anyway, and so they asked, they're like, "Oh, so, so what do you do? Like, do you date girls? Do you do this? Like, what do you do here?" We said, "No, like we we actually only just do this." It's like, "What? You don't date girls?" It's like, "No," or we we said, "No, we don't." We don't date girls. We for this two years, all we do is missionary work. That's that's it. We do nothing else. And then they to continue with their vulgar stream. They so then they start asking us. We're like, oh, like so you don't have sex with girls? Like you don't you don't do that stuff? We said no. We uh, during this two years we don't even date girls. 
and we believe in chastity, so we try to not have sex until we are married to, to a spouse. And they couldn't believe that. That was like the most outrageous thing that ever. Like, what? How could you, you know, how could, how could you, how could you go on preaching that? How can you preach that you should, you should wait to have sex until you're married if you've never had sex? Like, you don't even know how good it is. You can't, you can't go around teaching something that, that you haven't tried yet. You can't know if it's good or bad if you haven't tried it yet. So to be able to say something like that, you need to have had sex first so that you can say, you know, life with it is better or worse before marriage. And, uh. So that was one point we said, oh, well, that's not what we believe. You know, we believe you should wait. And so anyway, so then so then this started like a snowball of, <laughs> of them, you know, asking us these questions after question after question. Um, and it came to things like habits, like uh, a couple of them were smoking. And they said, oh, well, do you smoke? We said, no, we don't we don't we don't believe that we should smoke. Uh, you know, it's harmful to your health. It's a, it's an addiction. You know, you lose control over uh, over being able to choose whether you should smoke or not you know it just becomes this addiction we don't believe that you should do it and they said so then they said the same thing well you can't know if smoking is good or, or bad if you haven't smoked if you don't know what it's like you don't know what it makes you feel like you can't go around teaching people that you shouldn't smoke if you haven't tried it yet you have to try it to be able to to be able to teach people about it I said oh well that's not what we believe you know um anyway it just went on this way and then, and then it went on with drinking uh we don't you know we don't drink either and so same, so same thing with all these issues, with all these things they kept asking us, and then, and then the result was the same. We would tell them what we believed, and then they would say, "Well, you can't teach that if you haven't tried it." Um, but before, and so it was, you know, and this wasn't a hostile conversation; it was just a conversation, and we were having fun with them, and it was just a, it was just a fun time. Um, but before we left, um, so this whole time I'm, you know, and my I was answering some things, my companions answering some things, and I was putting this all together like, man. You know, so I started to think about. It. I was like, like, it's like I, I kind of understand their point. You know, I get, I get that a lot of people believe that you have to try something, and it, even I believe that for for a lot of things. You know, I believe that you should try something to know if you like it or not. Like a food, you can't say that you don't like a food if you haven't tried it. Uh, you could taste it first and then make an opinion whether you like it or you don't. It's like we, I teach my daughter. You know, she has to try something <laughs> before we'll let her not eat it. Uh, so we always make her try stuff. And so I started thinking through this. I'm like, man, did, are they right? Like, sh do we need to try this stuff? Um, but then these thoughts came rushing into my head, these, these facts, okay? These, like, this data, these facts about, about the things that happen when you do those things, specifically the things that we were talking about with these regazzi. There's, there are some, there are some things that can happen when, you know, people are free to choose and do whatever they want, but there are some consequences that happen if you choose to do things like that. For example, the two things that come to mind with, with having sex before marriage are... Um, STDs and unplanned pregnancies, which are which are consequences that people have to live with if they're going to uh, if they're going to have sex before marriage. Um, so, what does your future look like? Okay, if you if you choose to have sex before marriage, you can choose that. That's fine. But your future can look like having STDs for the rest of your life, and it can also look like having a child, which is awesome. Like children are great. I love having my child. But if it's unplanned, that can totally drastically change the, the direction of your future. So by saving sex until you're married, you control your future. Say, I'm not, I can't possibly have a child. I, it, I can, it is physically impossible for me to have child, a child if I do not have sex before I'm married. Fair? Yes, fair. Okay, so you can control your future by not doing that thing. Um, and so the thing that, so the, so the question to ask with all this stuff is, do I have to experience to know if it's good or bad? So sex before marriage, I know that there are some negative consequences to that. So if I want my future to look a certain way and I want to avoid those things, then I can choose to not have sex before I'm married. And then my future is what I want it to be. Right. And then on the topic of smoking. So they, you know, they told us, you can't tell us that smoking is bad, or that, you know, it's not a good thing if you haven't tried it. Well, what do the facts say about smoking? I don't know what the percentages are, but, you know, but the chances are super high that you'll get cancer. Uh, it's an addiction that, that can last a lifetime. It's super hard to quit. Uh, and man, it's expensive. It's so expensive to smoke. Uh, you know, five or six or whatever dollars a day it is to smoke a couple packs. Uh, man, it adds up. It adds up to, to being a huge sum of money, uh, which can make or break. A family being able to you know to provide food on the table sometimes that's a huge expense um, and so 
those are some other factors that I have control over. Now you can't control whether you get cancer or not sometimes, you know, sometimes it just happens. But your chances are drastically reduced of not getting cancer if you choose not to smoke. So that is a future that I can control. I can, I can make sure that my chances of getting cancer are significantly less by never smoking. I don't need to experience it to know that smoking is bad. Um, same with drinking, you know. Um, I don't drink at all. I've never tasted alcohol. I don't need to taste alcohol to know how many people die from, from drunk driving uh, or alcohol poisoning or, or just making poor, you know, getting a DUI or just making poor decisions in general because your judgment has been altered. Your, your capability of, of making decisions has been altered because, because you're drunk. Now, people drink responsibly and that's fine. But I can never, in my future, I will never have a negative experience with alcohol a, a, an accident or a mistake caused by drinking alcohol because I will never drink alcohol. That's a, that's a thing that I can control in my future. That is the future that I can control. So those are my four questions that I've been asking myself and kind of putting together with this theory that you really can see into your future and you can control it. To a, to a large extent, you can control your future by analyzing your activities and habits, your environment, your everything, and, and asking yourself these questions and other questions and determining whether or not your future looks brighter by doing those things or being in those places, um, or whether it looks darker, whether whether it's a future that you want to have or a future you want to avoid. And uh, it's pretty incredible that you can make a decision that day, today, you can make the decision to have a better future, that you can see into it and you can say, I don't want that future, what do I have to do to change it? And you can change it right then. You can stop, like me, you can stop buying donuts in the morning, you can stop spending your time at Taco Bell, you can, uh, you can choose not to gamble and spend your money that way. You can choose not to smoke. You can choose not to drink. There are so many variables in our lives that we have control over that alter our future. We can see directly into our future and, and, and change it for the better. And so that's what I would encourage you to do. I would encourage you to, go, to analyze, you know, analyze your life, your habits, your, your, your everything, and, uh, and determine whether it, what your future looks like if you continue down that course. Uh, and I promise you that, that you'll find ways that you can change your future, and you should. Uh, I know that my future is brighter because I've been, I've been doing this, and I have, I have literally been able to see my future change because of the slight alteration of a few habits. Well, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, if you liked any of the principles I talked about today, please, please share it with with uh, your friends and family, whoever you know, that, that, uh, that would like to see their future and change it for the better. Uh, and subscribe, you know, make sure you get my videos. I release them every Friday, so make sure you subscribe to, to be able to get those. I'm Jake DeWilkins. See you next week.